In Greek mythology, Thanatos wasn't a god in the traditional sense. He didn't rule over realms or wield divine powers like Zeus or Poseidon. Instead, Thanatos was the personification of death itself. He represented the inevitable end that comes for everyone, from mortals to gods. Thanatos was often depicted as a young man with dark wings, symbolizing how swiftly and silently death can come. He carried a sword or an extinguished torch, representing life's flame being snuffed out. But unlike the terrifying Grim Reaper we often think of today, Thanatos wasn't seen as evil. Instead, he was neutral, simply doing his duty. One of the most famous myths involving Thanatos is the story of King Sisyphus, and if you know anything about Sisyphus, you'll know he was no stranger to outsmarting the gods. Sisyphus, the king of Ephyra, frequently disrespected the gods by breaking their rules and using his wit to evade punishment. Sisyphus's troubles began when he angered Zeus by revealing a secret. Zeus had abducted a river nymph named Iagena, the daughter of the river god Aesopus. When Aesopus came searching for his missing daughter, Sisyphus told him what had happened in exchange for a freshwater spring for his city. Furious at Sisyphus for his betrayal, Zeus decided it was time for him to die. Zeus sent Thanatos, the embodiment of death, to take Sisyphus to the underworld. When Thanatos arrived to escort Sisyphus to the afterlife, the cunning king was prepared. Sisyphus pretended to cooperate, luring Thanatos into a trap. Using his wits, Sisyphus managed to chain Thanatos, rendering him powerless. With Thanatos bound, an unprecedented situation arose. No one could die. Mortals became invincible. Soldiers wounded on the battlefield continued to fight despite their injuries. The sick and elderly lived on in pain, unable to pass into the afterlife. The gods quickly noticed this disruption. Ares, the god of war, was particularly enraged. Without death, war lost its meaning. Curious, Ares intervened freeing Thanatos and restoring the natural order, Sisyphus was finally dragged to the underworld to face his fate. Sisyphus wasn't done defying the gods. Before his death, he had given his wife strict instructions not to perform the customary burial rites for him. When he reached the underworld, he used this as an excuse to plead his case to Persephone, the queen of the underworld. Sisyphus claimed that his wife's neglect dishonored him and begged Persephone to allow him to return to the living world briefly to ensure the proper rites were carried out. Persephone, moved by his plea, granted his request. Once back in the mortal world, Sisyphus refused to return to the underworld. The gods were outraged by Sisyphus's repeated defiance. Zeus decided enough was enough. Sisyphus was condemned to eternal punishment for his arrogance and trickery. In the underworld, he was forced to roll a massive boulder up a hill. However, just as he reached the top, the boulder would always roll back down, forcing him to start again. This endless, futile task became the ultimate symbol of punishment for defying the natural order. Thanatos was born to Nyx. The primordial goddess of the night and Erebus is often said to be the twin brother of Hypnos, the god of sleep. Nyx, their mother, was a mysterious and powerful figure in Greek mythology. Even Zeus, the king of the gods, was said to fear her because of her immense power. Thanatos wasn't alone in his duties. He was accompanied by his twin brother, Hypnos. Together, they symbolized two sides of the same coin, one bringing eternal rest, the other temporary relief. The poet Homer described them as partners in guiding the souls of the dead. After great battles, Hypnos and Thanatos would gently lift the bodies of fallen warriors, taking them to their final resting place. This connection between death and sleep wasn't just poetic, it reflected how the Greeks viewed death as a peaceful transition. But Thanatos wasn't just a character in mythology, he was also a symbol, a way for the Greeks to think about mortality. In their eyes, death wasn't a punishment or an enemy to fear, it was a natural part of life. While Thanatos played an essential role in the earlier myths, his prominence began to fade over time. Another figure rose to dominate the realm of death as the god of the underworld. Hades wasn't originally the god of death itself. His role was to rule the underworld, the place where souls went after they died. Thanatos, as the personification of death, was the one who carried out the act of taking a soul from the living world. But over time, their roles blurred. 
As stories of Hades grew more prominent, he became synonymous with death in popular imagination 